we're talking about dogs. Talking about big dogs, uh-huh. Talking about little dogs, oh yeah. Chasing the ball, chasing the cat, digging hole, thing like that, dog. In five, four, three, two. What fun is that? My staff got together and they went, we need to do an opening. I said, go to it. <laughs> I loved it. They did a fabulous job. Welcome, Nancy Haddock. You have brought two guys for us today, and I am so pleased. These little dogs are very, 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 very herding breed mm -hmm. types. So we have Heather. Heather, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? And what is this dog's name? This is Bender. And Bender. So is Bender. You said you mm -hmm. knew. I know your name. Yes. So tell me about Bender. Uh, Bender is a 16-month-old Border Collie. He just started his agility debut last month. Aha. Uh -huh. And uh, he also does a lot of Frisbee. Okay, so he likes the, 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 all the things that make him excited like that. Mm -hmm. Disc dog is a good one, and of course agility we love too. So how are you, my dear? Doing great, This Thank is you. Vicki Atkins, so tell me about your dog. This is Misty. She is a toy Australian Shepherd. An American Shepherd? Is no, that what they call her? she's not an American. She is a toy. She's uh, just like an, an, an Australian, Australian shepherd, shepherd, but she's miniature size. Uh -huh. Smaller so, than even the miniature. Smaller than the miniature. Yes. Okay, so this is a toy. Okay, that's very, very interesting. <laughs> so, and she does agility? She does agility. She's been with Nancy since she was six months. Uh -huh. She has several titles, and uh, she also does rally. Um, she has her title in um, Canine Good Citizen and just passed her therapy dog test. Wow. And she also has her novice dog trick title. There you go. So she's so been it, busy. She is a busy, busy dog. Well, that speaks a lot to this breed. I am, I am very impressed uh, because I have seen the, the uh, American, you know, shepherds like this and, and never the, the toy. That's just wonderful. Well, goodness gracious. Well, we have made them the dogs of the week and uh, we are, have a uh, $100 gift certificate to you from A1 Pet Emporium. These are for your sweet baby and because she is so sensitive to noise. Are you sensitive to noise? Are you sensitive to noise? He says, I am. <laughs> what is that? Is that yours? Oh, yes, yeah. that's yours, and you're going to play with that. <laughs> we have yours. a, we it's have, yours. yeah, we have one too for for Vicky's dog, and oh, this, boy. if you'll hand this over to her, Nance, Thank to A1 so Pet Emporium. She said, "What did you get?" So I'm going to, rather than squeak again, because I can see that this dog's going to go after it. I'm going to hand this to you. Thank now you know you. The, another reason that I was so excited about uh, you all coming is that uh, we have done a video on herding breeds. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I want to show you that. A1 Pet Emporium is Oklahoma's authority on healthy nutrition for dogs and cats. Quality does not have to cost more, and we only have the best. If your pet suffers from allergies, digestive issues, skin infections, or hair loss, it may be the result of their diet. A1 Pet Emporium can help. We offer pet portraits monthly, adorable rescue animals every Saturday from noon to four, and free dog and cat food samples. Locally owned and operated, we want to be your neighborhood pet store. This is going to be very interesting, I think, for everybody because it shows all the different breeds in the herding group. Let's watch. As man evolved, his survival skills as a hunter-gatherer included the necessity for a dog who could be trained to control groups of animals desirable as food sources. These different breeds were termed herding dogs. Depending on their location around the world, these dogs were trained to herd any creature determined by their owner handlers. Their impressive intelligence has helped make these dogs one of the most versatile breeds in existence today. We find them participating in sports such as fly ball, tri ball, Agility, and 
and frisbee. prey drive and focus of herding breeds makes them the choice for law enforcement and the military. Hollywood has glorified a member of the herding group as Rin Tin Tin. Herding dogs have also earned a lot of praise for their obedience skills. as well as creative expression. The sport of barn hunting is usually dominated by terriers. However, herding dogs rival this success and are gaining ground as the perfect hide-and-seek ratting dogs. We've covered many of the wonderful abilities of the herding breeds, and we could speak for hours more on all of the skills that they have learned and shared with us. Their future as companion dogs and working partners will undoubtedly expand as time moves on and we look forward to that. Herding breeds are very, very, very special, are they not? Yes, they are. Everything that they can do, and part of it is because they are so intelligent. They learn quickly and bred the right way and bred well. They can do just about anything. Folks, if you're looking for a great dog now, you've got to remember this dog is very active. I mean, <laughs> you have to be an active person, am I right? Yes. To keep up with them. So definitely, definitely look for this breed if you're looking for a dog that to have fun with. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, Dr. Roach is with us. A1 Pet Emporium is Oklahoma's authority on healthy nutrition for dogs and cats. Quality does not have to cost more, and we only have the best. If your pet suffers from allergies, digestive issues, skin infections, or hair loss, it may be the result of their diet. A1 Pet Emporium can help. We offer pet portraits monthly, adorable rescue animals every Saturday from noon to four, and free dog and cat food samples. Locally owned and operated, we want to be your neighborhood pet store. Well, how great because today we have Dr. Roach with us. How are you, sir? I'm doing awesome. It's so good to be with you. It's so good to see yeah. you. You always are so informative. But we, we really get a lot out of it every time right. that you're on. So today we had some, some questions that you had called me and said that you get a lot of questions from people about heat. Yes, and this is a good time to talk about that because it's actually life or death at this point for a lot of our dogs. And we'll just go down the list because there are a lot of dangers of overheating. You have to remember, it could be heat stroke, but heat stroke is way down the line. Heat stress comes first, and that's when you get behavioral changes, and they change a little bit, and they may just kind of stumble a little bit, and they start acting differently, and the owners know when that is. But if you let that go on, it becomes a heat stroke. Mm -hmm. And then the brain gets damaged, and then you start getting a bloody diarrhea, and by that time, it's too late. And so uh, the important thing and the biggest deal about heat is prevention. You've got to prevent it. 
And so uh, that brings up the next topic that people want to know. What about dogs in cars? Well, it's good to take dogs with you because they're a part of your pack. But you got to prepare ahead of time. Always have a gallon of water in your car, your water, the water they're used to. Right. And, um, they and never, never in a closed car. That, that never is Never in so a closed dangerous. car. Um, in fact, in the 90s, I don't know how they got away with this study, but uh, at 84 degrees, 50% of the dogs succumb to the heat at 48 minutes. Now, we wouldn't think that 84 degrees is even very hot. But in that car, it's in that 100 car, and something. In that car, it can get so, I mean, you can get 150 degrees really easy. Yeah, exactly. So, so. Uh, dogs that have a tendency to get overheated, is there a certain breed or certain yeah, age or anything? Yeah, good question. That's in there, too. Um, the, the older dogs cannot acclimate very well to the heat. And, uh, and so, and that goes for people, too. People's, as you get older, your thirst mechanism doesn't kick in as quickly as it should. And so the older dogs, the dogs with heavy coats, and the short-faced breeds are going to have a lot harder time with the, with the heat. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so some people want to know, what should I do with a, with a coat? Should I clip the coat or not clip the coat? And I just leave it up to individuals. If the coat has a tendency to mat, get it off. Mm -hmm. Because part of the, the mechanism for heating and cooling a body is so they can raise the hair and lower it. And that's, sometimes on a lot of dogs, that's a good way to regulate the body temperature. Uh -huh. So if they have so, an undercoat, dogs that have an undercoat too. That's... Right. Just shave them early, like in late May. And then they have time to regrow that coat before. And another factor, and this is why it's all individualized, is, is that a light-coated dog or, or darker-coated? Because... On the light dogs, you may have to actually compensate with the with the sunscreen, ah. like, like bullfrog or something like that, because they could get sunburned. You you meant to do something good, you shave them, and now they're getting sunburned. That's with a white dog. Right. Dog that's white. Yeah. That's right. So a dark a dark colored dog, you say, is going to get overheated quicker than a than a light colored dog. Right. And the light colored dogs are in danger of getting sunburned, mm -hmm. even on their face and their nose and their ears. You can get some pretty bad burns. Ah. And the bullfrog stuff is the uh, the water uh, uh, stable. You have to reapply it, but uh, you can put it on even just a couple times a week will help these dogs. So, Excellent. Um, and so on the topic of acclimating an older dog to the heat, you can't just go out in the middle of the day and start exercising because it's a bright sunny day and you have time off from school. You have to actually uh, start working with them and get them used to the heat and mm -hmm. go out in the mornings and late at night. But even at night, sometimes it's still 90 degrees at 10 o'clock. Yeah. So you have to just be really careful with that. Oh, absolutely. So, um, uh, what uh, in, when when you're talking about dogs, should you what kind of if you're going to have them in a kennel or something, what what should it be if they've got to be outside? Well, my question is that it's how deep of a relationship do you want with your dog? Because they want to be part of your pack, and if you want them to be part of your pack, you have to train them to be sociable, mannerable, and not use your house as a toilet. Mm -hmm. And so there's some training uh, people out there that just hit that hard, and I really recommend that you get some professional help to help you enjoy your dog. Right, to bring so, them in. To bring yeah, them a in lot of people and, will say, oh, my dog prefers being out. See, I never realized that that was uh, true. That's because <laughs> I they always let, argue about that. They wouldn't let them in when they're puppies, and that's now they're a, afraid to that come That is in. exactly right. That and is so, exactly yeah. right. And so, um, you know... They, even if they're going to be outside, I have one dog that prefers not to come inside because he didn't. He's a he's a Pyrenees and he's kind of a guarding dog and he doesn't want to come in. Mm -hmm. he won't, but um, those dogs, you just have to be sure and refill their water bowl several times a day, and just really be have careful. Have some shade. Have some shade for them, and. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and, and a, a little pond or a little pool that they can get in. I, I like those little baby pools that they can get in and get some, get some water. Yeah, but if bodies. you don't buy those early in the season, you won't be able to get one. <laughs> That's they, true. Walmart, they go fast. They, they go fast. So, so what do you think of the, uh, they have, I have seen some uh, shields or vests that uh, people say will help a dog. And well, cool good them. question. The, the, those, I think, are overrated, and they're probably good for working dogs. Uh -huh. But for the average dog, a cooling vest, a mat, those kind of things are not that effective. Just getting the dog wet is good enough when they get overheated. If they get really hot, you know, they can't sweat, so they don't need electrolytes. They just need to get wet. Exactly. And, so, um, and that will help you get that uh, out of there. And sometimes yeah. getting them wet with something like, uh, like the essential oils, like peppermint, uh -huh. It does two things. It makes them, it makes you and them take a break from the play. Wow! And and you can uh, spr uh, spritz down their ears and their belly, and mm -hmm. it gets them a little bit cooler. Mm -hmm. And the, and for you too, it keeps off mosquitoes. 
and on the dogs it keeps off fleas and ticks. Ah, so this is called ticked off, and, yeah. they, can, and they can get this at your place? Yeah, but if, How you're can a, they get that? if you're an essential oil user, I'll just give you a hint. There's peppermint, pine, purification, and citronella in here, and you can call my office, I'll give you the recipe for free. It's, it's a wonderful for the whole family. Excellent. Yeah. So how do they get in touch with you then? Oh, call, uh, call us at the Wellington Park. It's right on I-40, and it's 605-6675. Excellent, so. excellent. Well, we thank you so much. It is such a pleasure to have you on and give us all of this information. Folks, it, it, the heat is terrible. So please be sure, bring your dog in. If the dog must be out, please provide enough water yeah. for the day, shade and maybe one of the little pools that they can get in and lie down. So important. So we're going to um, toss this over to Ted. We thank okay, you so thank much you. there again for coming. And Ted is going to uh, inform us about some books and some videos for kids. All right, thanks, Pat. I was actually just looking over OKC Pets magazine. Um, I, I was actually reading Pat's article when I was at the vet the other day with Duke, and she was talking about the realities of dog ownership according to law, and we have a lot of good law segments. Pat wanted to come on and talk about it. I, I learned a little bit there, and um, you talked a little bit about let people who let their dogs run around wild without tethering them or leashing them up. Yeah, there is a law against that, you know. Now, enacting those laws, sometimes it doesn't happen. Uh, a dog that is in a community where everybody knows the dog, sometimes they won't say anything. Mm -hmm. But there is a law against it. And some dogs who can get aggressive and cause problems, you know, you definitely ought to do it. Well, and it's just it's dog safety, too. Uh, I mean, absolutely. Not the safest absolutely. thing for your dog. So I wanted to talk about a couple of movies here. Uh, this one for the kids, okay, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Now, we know the story. It's a good kid's <laughs> story. Um, for a second, I was thinking about, that's the one where she eats all the porridge, right? Yeah. Okay. Actually, yeah, actually, if you remember in this particular one, the main thing is that they, they teach kids to read, to live, you know, yeah. really love to read. And all of these, uh, with the Goldilocks and the Three Bears, that, that is Goldilocks, and these are her companions, you know. That's right. So it, it is really interesting because they teach them to, you know, enjoy reading. That's right, that's right. And you're not going to find that very often, a movie where you're watching a movie and they're telling you to read. So. That's exactly. Exactly right. Uh, Zootopia, you were telling me a little bit about this. This is with, uh, we have a young female uh, bunny who wants to be a police officer. And this one's for everybody. I mean, it is a cartoon. It was hilarious. But I it's really hilarious. loved reading it. I mean, viewing it. And uh, there actually is a book on it. But uh, this little bunny decides she wants to become a police officer. Okay. So she meets this. Of course, everybody's poo-pooing it. And they, mm -hmm. she turns out to be a meter maid, which is very demeaning. But <laughs> the, the fox that she meets, uh, has she has a little problem with. Mm -hmm. And then he joins her. The story is wonderful. I think adults and kids. Now, this is really for older kids. You know, yeah. The kids. 12 to 17, that sort of thing. And uh, I must mention Michelle from our staff was saying the sloths are the real funny ones because the, they move so slow. They do. They're just, they're <laughs> hilarious. Well, Disney always does yeah, a great they, job. Yeah, they do a great job. And this one, um, this one's for a little bit older crowd because it's a more of a serious topic, <laughs> um, but it's, it's about a dog who suffers from PTSD. Yeah, which happens a lot, you know, with dogs that come out. The handler is is uh, it's killed. It's called Max, by the way. It's called say. Max, you know, and the handler um, dies in, in service, and the dog comes back to the community, and it, it is it is a wonderful, actually a, a wonderful, but it is for older older kids and, you and, might and adults. Want some tissues nearby, yeah. but that's <laughs> Absolutely. okay. It's a, Absolutely, you know, our dogs sometimes make us cry that's a little right. bit. That's okay. Uh, we wanted to mention at Best of Books in Edmond, if you're looking to get this lady's autograph, she's going to be there with her books. She's going to be telling some stories. You promised. Oh, we're going to have, yes, we're going to have a great time because a part of my staff is coming and we're having a party over there. We're going to have some favors and we're going to have some uh, dog talk material. Right. But the main thing is that these books, and we're going to talk about them, I really, folks, have a, a strong mission to get kids interested in reading number one, number two, reading about the dogs. And in these books, I do give the dogs voices. Now, the third one that I'm putting out is called I Love Being Me. And this particular little book encourages kids to love being themselves. 
So that is the important thing. But we're going to have a great time. It's Best of Books in 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Today. Come on out. It's today, and we're going to have a blast. And the best thing about Pat's books are there's also lessons in them as well. And, and that's what I really like, too. You're getting your kids to read. We're talking about dogs, like we always do on this show, and learning some great lessons. Absolutely. And we hope that you enjoy them. Thanks so much, Ted. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we have a realtor to interview. You want to do that? Yeah, and there's some big dogs. <laughs> some very big dogs. <laughs> Hey, Dog Talk fans, make sure you join the conversation on social media. Just go to Facebook.com slash Dog Talk TV. We'd love to hear a story of your furry friend, so send us an email to pat at dogtalktv.com. You could be featured as our Dog of the Week. Now, enjoy the show. Well, a beautiful lady who happens to be a real estate lady. How are you? I'm well. Janice Pat. Winchester. Thank and you've got you. your wonderful dogs. Love these particular breeds. And, of course, my host, yes. Ted, loves golden retrievers. You brought retrievers. me a golden oh. retriever named Buster. Exactly. <laughs> Which Buster is adorable. He is so cute. So your, your mountain dog, when did you get him? Uh, she is four and a half years Her. old. Um, we got him, him uh, five and a half years ago. Uh -huh. And we thought, well, he's lonely. And then I don't know why we thought that. And then we got Zoe for Buster. And uh -huh. I tell you, they are li life mates. They just absolutely. Yes. Boyfriend and girlfriend? They Well, probably brother and sister. OK. They, uh, <laughs> Sorry, guys. They, I didn't know what I was. <laughs> they, uh, you can't take one without the other uh -huh. one. They get, they get full of anxiety when one's gone. Well, you know, I might I might add they are a little bit overweight. They did you notice are. that? <laughs> yes, I did. And she is really fluffy. And when you shave her, she looks uh but they don't caution me too much about her weight, uh, mm -hmm. but he at one time got up to 124 wow, pounds. Wow, wow. Well, well the Burmese mountain dogs do carry weight because uh -huh. they're, they're very big bones too. So a lot of it is hair. But um, but by the same token, you always oh. during the summertime kind of want to watch that okay. um, because that sure. will uh, make them lose a little bit of weight, which uh -huh. of course the weight is it exacerbates the heat problem. So let's talk about in the real estate business. I was fascinated, mm -hmm. and of course you are called the pet friendly <laughs> realtor <laughs> because you have your dogs. You love pets. So when a person comes to you and they say, "I'm looking for a house," and I have two dogs. Mm -hmm. What what do you ask? Do you ask them questions? I do. I do. Um, it's real important to me to find the right home for whoever is my client. And uh, I always ask them what are the top five must-haves. And then I, I ask them to tell me a little bit about your, your life. Your, and that, of course, I said, do you have pets? Do you have children? Um, and find those things out up front, then I can, I ask a lot of questions because I, I want to make the best use of their time. So it really goes, it's a lot of questions about their lifestyle. Uh -huh. And so when they say, well, I have a, a dog, I have some small dogs, mm -hmm. um, but I, I, you know, I want a, a great big acreage kind of thing. What mm -hmm. do you look for? Um, well, I, I try to fashion it around what they look for. Uh, if they need fences, if they need, uh, if they have small dogs, um, most small dogs I tend to stay around the house. I think the small dogs will get lost. So you right. want, even if you have a big fence, you might want to put a smaller fence inside a fence. Um, depending on the dog type, uh, a lot of HOAs, you know, only let you have a certain amount of mm -hmm. dogs. So we really right. try to figure out what kind of dogs they have, what are their needs, if they need a fence. Uh, if they need, there's so many different variations of fences. Mm -hmm. There's a wrought iron. Do you put the chicken wire up for the small dogs? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot. So of you grow to into. that length, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. Well, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And do they also? Uh, I guess I would assume you advise them if there is a park around that Absolutely. they can take their dogs to, or a lot of times if they are close to a facility like a high school or any kind of yeah. school that has a, a big a area, uh -huh. exactly mm -hmm. that they can go to. And so what? Do you uh, do people come to you when they're looking for a community uh, uh -huh. to find a unity in the community <laughs> for dogs? They do. Um, it's real. It's been amazing to me to see how pets and the the life of our pets and the love of our pets have really grown to um, 
apartments and condos and uh, people are, we talked about barking lots where they, they high rise communities are putting uh, lots. Oh yes, yeah. downtown, you know, Absolutely. In, in Oklahoma City there are so many uh, high rises that come up and people that work down there. So uh, obviously uh, condos and things like that. So mm -hmm. when they, they come to you, you actually research all of this, do you oh, not? Oh, absolutely. Um, you want to, if someone needs access to, to downtown or you find out where they're working, if they need highway access and you, you want to make their commute time shorter and then you look at their lifestyle and you, you once you've determined the area that's best for them, finding the home, finding out what the lifestyle allows you to to do your searches mm -hmm. for their home and what their home needs are. Oh, that's excellent. So, do you um, uh, do you are you registered to that? I mean, if people came into town and they're going, I, I really need to find a realtor that will be somebody that will understand my dog situation. Dog friendly. Yeah. <laughs> so, how did they reach you? Um, you know, through advertising. I try to put it in advertising. Um, I build websites, you know, that, and I, I believe in my backgrounds in marketing, and I, I think that you you use that to your advantage, mm -hmm. and I want to be known as the person that takes those considerations. Yeah. Or real so uh, you are with Keller Williams? I am. Uh-huh. So they get hold of Keller Williams, and I assume when somebody calls and says, I need somebody that is kind of dog friendly, they mm -hmm. call you. Well, I hope I have <laughs> built that <laughs> reputation. Uh, I, I think they would, would yeah. do that. Well, I, obviously mm -hmm. they wouldn't. And uh -huh. folks, it, it is important. And the reason that I, I am so excited about Janice being here is because changing areas, changing uh, any kind of um, situations, your dog is going to get a little bit tense. Mm -hmm. uh, moving to a new place, mm -hmm. it's always a little bit of stress on mm -hmm. a dog. So it is very important that you have a plan for this. And Janice obviously can provide you with a plan for getting the right place to place to put your dog, the right place that your dog will be happy, some place that you will have access to a veterinarian that is not too far away that mm -hmm. you can check out, uh, a park to take your dog to be interactive with and this sort of thing. It is so important. So we appreciate it Absolutely. very, very Thank much. You. Yeah. Thank you. You know, um, and thanks for bringing a retriever. Uh, no, <laughs> of course, of course Ted is so in, enamored with retrievers. It's, uh, He's uh, a good boy. They yes. are I'm our... sorry, we're jealous. She so said, we got a little me. jealous. She said, what about me, for goodness <laughs> sake? They Absolutely. Parts of our family, yes, dude. yes. Are you a good dog? So, yes, so do I you am. interact with these dogs at all? Are they just kind of oh, house pets? Or? Uh, well, they're house pets, but they're part of our family. I mean, yeah. they, uh, until she developed a lot of her disabilities, I mean, uh, my favorite thing was to put them in the car. And take them and with take us. Them with and, you. That's another uh, thing, driving around. Uh, oh, I love it. I they love, it. love to go for a ride. So. <laughs> well, thank you so oh, much, Jen. And, and you know thank what? You. The next time that you find someone that you help that way, will uh -huh. you bring them on and let's uh, talk about it? I would love to. I see so many fascinating things on a daily uh, basis. I, I, I know that. that you probably do. <laughs> I do. Folks, you take care. Thank Janice you. will be back. If you need to look for a place, you need to get hold of Keller Williams and let her find you one. We had a great time. Thank you. Take care. Be kind to your dogs, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>